I also want to thank the National Academy of Sciences, the Mouchette family for sponsoring this, this symposium, and I want to thank uh, Dr. Ryshevsky and Dr. Blass for inviting me to present some of my work. And, and I'm going to spend some time, I'm going to shift gears and become a little molecular for you and cellular and talk about the molecular mechanisms of melatonin's anti-cancer actions. This slide is, represents a lot of work by my laboratory over a number of years, and basically it really just shows that when we take human breast cancer cells, we grow them in culture, and we treat them with nanomolar concentrations, physiologic concentrations of melatonin, we can modestly, most of the time, sometimes very dramatically, suppress the, pl the proliferation and growth of human breast cancer cells in culture. And if we use antagonists to melatonin, S20928, we can block melatonin's growth inhibitory effects. And in this other panel over here, when we take our breast cancer cells and we overexpress the melatonin receptor in them and then treat the cells with melatonin, we get a much more pronounced growth inhibitory effect. So we know that the melatonin receptor, but particularly the MT1 melatonin receptor mediates a large portion of the growth inhibitory effect that we see in breast cancer cells. And again, this can be reversed by using a receptor antagonist. So what's the expression pattern of the MT1 receptor in human breast cancer cells? This is some work we just recently published. Using the ABCAM antibody, we can show that for M the ABCAM antibody to the MT1 receptor, we demonstrated that the melatonin receptor, particularly the MT1, is located in the cytoplasm of the cell, particularly associated with the cell membrane in human breast cancer cells and in human embryonic cells, we, which do not express the MT1 receptor. We got a nice blank screen, thank goodness. And then we also did a confocal analysis where we co-localized the expression of the MT1 receptor with the caviolin antibody. And caviolin is a protein that is integral to cavioli or lipid rafts, these very important signaling platforms in cell membranes. And you can see in the areas here that we have some yellow spots running around in here. We have, certainly have some red, and we have a lot of green. Those yellow spots indicate that the MT1 receptor and caviolin co-localize, meaning that some melatonin receptors are located and associated with lipid rafts, and this becomes important because there's many other signaling proteins in these lipid rafts, including SARC, PI3 kinase, calmodulin, a variety of, of kinase pathways that, that melatonin can interact with, as well as many, and you'll see it down here, in, or right up over in here, these are nuclear receptors, the estrogen receptor, the androgen receptor, that have membrane receptor components. This is a new story in nuclear receptors and, and steroid hormones, but we know that these also reside in these lipid rafts. So this tells us a little bit about how melatonin through the MT1 receptor might function to regulate signaling pathways in human breast cancer cells. So. Melatonin is expressed at the cell membrane in breast cancer cell and co-localizes with caviolin, a key protein in lipid rafts. These are important, again, important signaling platforms in cell membranes. Data I don't have time to show you, but has been already been published, is that the messenger RNA levels for the MT1 receptor is suppressed by estrogen and melatonin in human breast cancer cells. But if you remove estrogen and melatonin by charcoal stripping, by uh, it removes estrogen and melatonin, you upregulate the MT1 receptors. So melatonin in this system, in human breast cancer cells, can downregulate the expression of its own receptor. And also in some data that I've just recently published, MT1, the melatonin receptor, is expressed in primary tumor biopsies and has a positive correlation with the estrogen receptor alpha expression, with the estrogen receptor alpha protein. But again, we, we did a small cohort of tumors here, only 50 tumors, and the small sample size does not provide us enough statistical power to determine significance with other important tumor, mark, tumor markers, and we're working to expand those, those, those numbers. So we know that melatonin, through the MT1 receptor, has inhibitory effects on human breast cancer. And these are just some of the signaling pathways that we know 
are associated with the MT1 receptor and with melatonin. These include the cyclic AMP PKA pathway, the RAF1, uh, RAFB, uh, MAP, kinase, ERK pathways. We also know through G-alpha uh, Q and 11 that melatonin can regulate PKC signaling pathways, AKT signaling pathways, and intracellular calcium, and downstream of that, calmodulin kinase signaling pathways. And then we also have over here, mediated through probably G-alpha I2, uh, uh, cyclic GMP signaling associated pathways. And we know that melatonin, through activation of the MT1 receptor, can modulate and activate G-alpha I2, G-alpha I3, G-alpha Q, and G-alpha 11 G proteins in human breast cancer cells. So these are very important signaling pathways that we know can be regulated in human breast cancer cells. And that brings me to an important stud story. I'm a steroid receptor biologist as well as a melatonin biologist by training. And we know that many steroid receptors, all steroid receptors, including melatonin, or including estrogen receptor alpha, are phosphoproteins. And various signaling pathways, which I just showed you melatonin can modulate, have very specific phosphorylation sites on the estrogen receptor alpha and can modulate the activity of the estrogen receptor alpha. This is the primary receptor that estrogen binds to and activates to stimulate proliferation of breast epithelium and to stimulate the growth and proliferation of a, of a large percentage of human breast cancer cells. So we asked the question, does melatonin modulate the activity of the estrogen receptor alpha? So we took human breast cancer cells, we put them in an estrogen deficient environment, and then we added back estrogen. And as you can see, 10 to minus 8 molar 17 beta estradiol gives us a nice stimulation of this reporter assay here. This reporter assay is the fire, luciferase firefly gene with an estrogen response element downstream. This is what uh, estrogen receptors bind to. So when we add estrogen, the estrogen receptors are activated, they dimerize, they bind to the ARE, and they express this construct expresses a luciferase gene and we can measure that in a luminometer by measuring light okay so estrogen can stimulate uh, this this uh, reporter construct in our breast cancer cells melatonin by itself has no effect on it but if we take the cells and pretreat them with melatonin one nanomolar for five minutes and ask, add estradiol we can significantly blunt estrogen's ability to activate its own receptor blocking estrogen's potent estrogenic and mitogenic signaling pathway. This is just to show you some new data coming out of our lab that we have now uh, have data showing that melatonin, by blocking the PKA signaling pathway, can decrease the phosphorylation of serine 263 on the estrogen receptor. So melatonin does decrease it by a little bit by itself compared to control, but if we pretreat the cells with melatonin followed by estradiol, we significantly decrease the phosphorylation of that serine. And we think that's an important role in regulating how melatonin regulates the estrogen receptor's function. This is another study that I want to show you. We looked at a variety of nuclear receptors and hormone, uh, nuclear hormone receptors. This is the retinoic acid receptor. These are vitamin A receptors. You add retinoids or vitamin A and you can stimulate the activity of this receptor using a reporter construct, again, in MCF7 human breast cancer cells. But this time, instead of inhibiting the activity of the receptor, when we pretreated the cells with melatonin, we potentiated the action of the receptor. So melatonin inhibits estrogen receptor alpha activity, but it stimulates the transcriptional activity of the retinoic acid receptor alpha pathway. And RAR alpha, when added to human breast cancer cells, cause them to differentiate and undergo apoptosis. And we have shown clearly that we can really inhibit the growth of breast cancer cells using a combination of melatonin and retinoic acid. So, melatonin modulates the transcriptional activity of a variety of steroid hormone nuclear receptors, including estrogen receptor alpha, progesterone receptor, retinoic acid receptor, ROR alpha receptors, which we'll talk about a little bit later, as well as vitamin D receptors. Melatonin via activation of G-alpha I2 proteins, data that I've published, don't have time to show you, suppresses ER-alpha transcriptional activity, 
but by activation of G-alpha-Q potentiates RAR alpha transcriptional activity. So two different G proteins are being used for these different actions. Melatonin represses ER-alpha transcriptional activity, but does not modulate ER-beta transcription, transcriptional activity. And it is the MT1 receptor that mediates this action and not the MT2 receptor. So does the combination of melatonin and retinoic acid, in this case 9-cis-retinoic acid, repress the development and or induce the regression of preclinical models of breast cancer? In this case, we use a Sprague Dolly rat and we induced cancer in these rats by giving them a carcinogen in nitrosyl methyl urea. And we took these rats and we put them in a long day photo period, 12 light, 12 dark. And we gave them carcinogen and at the same day that they received their carcinogen, we also began to give them combination of melatonin and retinoic acid. And what we see is that the combination of melatonin and 9-cis retinoic acid prevent carcinogen-induced mammary tumor formation decreasing tumor incidence from 90% in the controls to anywhere between 5 and 12% in our animals treated with the combination of melatonin and 9-cis retinoic acid. So we have a preventative strategy for breast cancer treatment, at least in this animal model. We did a follow-up study to ask if melatonin and retinoic acid had any effect on therapy, and the answer there is when we let the tumors develop and then begin our combinational therapy, we could induce a regression of 50% of the tumors and partial regression of 21% of the established tumors. And in fact, we had another 20% that remained stable. They didn't regress, they didn't grow significantly, and so we had a response rate of either regression or sta being stable, stasis, of 90%. So melatonin does interact with nuclear receptors to have profound effects on breast cancer. I want to change uh, directions a little bit and talk a little bit about melatonin and invasion and metastasis in breast cancer. There were two studies that came up early on suggesting that melatonin may play a role in invasion and metastasis. The first was by Lassoni back in 1987 where he found plasma concentrations of melatonin were significantly reduced in patients with metastatic disease. A follow-up study to that by Sam Koss out of Spain showed that physiologic concentrations of melatonin could inhibit or decrease the invasive capacity of MCF7 human breast cancer cells. The problem with Sam's study is that we now know that MCF7 cells in most laboratories are poorly to non-invasive. So we wanted to readdress this. So we took Sam's data and we believed it. And we, so we set our hypothesis that, that melatonin plays an inhibitory role in breast cancer cell invasion. And to do these studies, we took three human breast cancer cell lines that we have, MCF7-6 cells, which are derived from the parental MCF7 cell line, but it had been serially passaged in nude mice until we could pull out, or another group had pulled out, a very or a nice metastatic clone. These cells would metastasize in mice. We also, with war, uh, collaborators at Tulane, developed two other cell lines, MCF7 cells that overexpressed HER2.1, this is HER2 new, Hercept, uh, that the antibody Herceptin is made to. And when you overexpress that receptor in breast cancer cells, they are very invasive and very metastatic. And then we also made MCF7 CR, CX4 cells. CXCR4 is a receptor to the stromal-derived uh, factor, cell-derived factor SDF1. And when you overexpress CRCX4, the cells become metastatic and they home to the bone. They home to the bone. And we know that bone mets are a very serious disease. So using these different cell lines, I'm just showing you here using a transwell invasion assay, the invasive capacity of these different cell types. And you can see that the 7-6s uh, are much more metastatic than the MCF7s. And the HER2.1s, the MCF7 HER2.1s, are highly metastatic. They're highly invasive. Treating these cells in culture, doing, again, the transwell assay, we can see that after four days and six days, we can dramatically suppress the invasive capacity of these very invasive and metastatic breast cancer cells. We also can show that if here's our same study done in MCF7 six cells, control cells, melatonin-treated cells, we get a nice suppression after four days. But if we overexpress the melatonin receptor, MT1, into our cells, we almost completely prevent the invasive capacity. And that activity can be reversed 
using Luzendal, an MT1 and MT2 receptor antagonist. So we know that this anti-invasive activity is receptor MT1 receptor mediated. We also know that in the invasive pathway, P38 is a critical signaling molecule in human breast cancer cells. So we asked, does melatonin modulate P38 MAP kinase? And the answer to that is yes, as we treat cells with melatonin at one hour, at 18 hours, and at 24 hours, you can see the significant reduction in phosphor, the phosphorylated form or the active form of P38. So melatonin is able to decrease P38 levels. So here's a little cartoon to show you what we're talking about. So melatonin, through the MT1 receptor, we haven't defined the pathway from melatonin receptor to the P38 yet, but melatonin can repress P38 phosphorylation and in doing so decreases the expression of two matrix metalloproteases, MMP2 and MMP9, which are critical for invasive capacity of cancer cells, breast cancer cells in particular. So I want to switch gears again and move you to a new story that we have going on in our lab, which is we know melatonin has inhibitory actions on human breast cancer cells, but what does it do? Does it have any action on normal breast epithelium? So to answer this question, my lab has developed a transgenic mouse where we have taken the mouse and we have overexpressed the MT1 receptor specifically in the mammary gland. We call this a MMT1 knock-in mouse. And again, we're on the CA3H background. So we took the MT1 receptor, we flag-tagged it, put it up, upstream of the mouse mammary tumor uh, virus promoter, and we developed our transgenic mice. And this just shows you from one of our clones, and we have multiple clones that all show the same thing, that over time, as we go through puberty, we begin to get a small increase in MT1 levels. But as we enter pregnancy, that MMTV promoter is highly sensitive to progestins and glucocorticoids that are going up during pregnancy, and you see a large increase in MT1 expression in the mammary glands specifically of those mice. One of the first things we saw in those mice was that pups born to transgenic mothers shown in the black bars had a reduced birth weight and certainly as they were suckling, had a reduced body weight compared to pups born to non-transgenic control mothers. And as soon as we weaned those pups from their mothers, birth weights returned to control values. So we said, aha, we think there's a problem here with milk production. This slide shows you the mammary gland, and these are mammary gland whole mounts from these mice, from the non-transgenic controls, and from our MT1 overexpressing trans transgenic mice, and what you can see is starting as early as four weeks, going into eight weeks, and even into 12 weeks of puberty, there is a very significant change and decrease in the amount of ductual branching and terminal imbud formation in these mammary glands. And this persists into pregnancy and lactation, so that during pregnancy and lactation, only about half of the alveolar components are formed in our transgenic mice as compared to controls. So we're slowing, we're repressing mammary gland development by overexpressing the MT1 receptor in these mice. So to summarize this part of what we're doing and what we've done, we know that MT1 expression inhibits ductual branching, terminal inbud formation, and suppresses lobulo-alveolar expansion in, in the mouse. MT1 expression significantly inhibits mammary epithelial proliferation beginning at eight weeks of age, and we measured this by BRDU staining. We know that estrogen receptor alpha expression in the mammary gland of the MT1 transgenic mouse is significantly reduced beginning at eight weeks of age all the way through lactation. So we're knocking down ER alpha expression. And we also decrease significantly the expression of milk proteins such as whey acidic protein in the alveolar cells of these MT1 transgenic mice. So melatonin does have a very profound effect on normal mammary epithelial cells, and thus we would expect on normal breast epithelial cells in humans. So I want to tie this into our story of melatonin circadian disruption and the clock in breast epithelial and breast cancer cells. Richard Stevens already showed you 
the circadian clock. Thank you for doing that for me. And there are a number of important components in this. And, and nobody really knew where to begin to look with regards to anti-cancer effects. But one of the first things we decided to do was just to look and see, are these expressed in normal breast epithelial cells and in breast cancer cells? And what I can show you is MCF7 or MCF10A cells are normal human breast epithelial cells that are not cancerous, are not malignant. And we see clock genes, BML, the cryptochrome genes, the period genes, all expressed in our normal breast epithelial cells. But when we move to cancer cells, MCF7 breast cancer cells, and this is true for all the cell lines we've looked at, what we see missing is sometimes per the period one gene, but almost always, always, either no expression or very, very low expressions of the period two gene. So we ask the question, what happens if you reintroduce the period two gene into human breast cancer cells? This is the growth of the various different groups, and I'm just going to focus on this line right here. This is a line where we transfected in the period 2 gene into these cells and also added and expressed elevated levels of the cryptochrome 2 gene, and you can see that we dramatically decrease cell proliferation in these human breast cancer cells. We've published this paper in the uh, Journal of Biological Rhythms, and what we know is that breast cancer cell lines fail to express or express very low levels of period 2. That expression of the period 2 gene and the cryptochrome gene into breast cancer cells inhibits cell proliferation, blocks cell cycle, induces the expression of a DNA repair enzyme and an apoptosis-associated enzyme, P53, leading to apoptosis of breast cancer cells. If we take these human breast cancer cells, we express period 2 into them, and we try to grow them in soft auger, they fail to grow or they grow and make very small colonies. And that is a standard uh, assay that we use now to be able to say that period 2 acts as a tumor suppressor gene in human breast cancer cells. And we think it does that by enhancing the expression of period 2, or, or the expression of P53, and BRCA1, breast cancer-associated gene 1, both of which are DNA repair enzymes and apoptosis enzymes. Now, data that I mentioned but didn't show you earlier is melatonin can also, as it represses the transcriptional activity of the estrogen receptor, it can also repress the transcriptional activity of the retinoic acid orphan receptor alpha, the retinoic acid-related orphan receptor alpha. And here you can see that with increasing concentrations of melatonin, we get greater and greater, greater decrease of ROR alpha transcriptional activity. Why is that important? Because ROR alphas bind to a response element up downstream in the promoter of the BMEL1 gene, one of these critical genes in the clock. And so if melatonin can downregulate ROR alpha, and ROR alpha, when it binds to ROR, is supposed to be able to induce BMEL1 expression, Maybe melatonin can modulate the clock in peripheral cells, particularly in breast epithelial cells. So we were able to get a hold of a BMEL promoter construct, that a human BMEL promoter construct, connected again to the luciferase gene, same type of reporter that we've used earlier. We transfected that into both breast cancer cells and MCF, MCF10A breast epithelial cells, and we saw the same thing. When we express high levels of ROR alpha, we get a big increase in this BMEL promoter activity. So BMEL expression is going up when we add ROR alpha, so it is a positive regulator of BMEL in breast epithelial cells. If we pretreat the cells with melatonin and then express ROR alpha, we can repress that activity. And this effect can be partially reversed with Luzendal, an MT1 receptor antagonist. So again, we think the MT1 receptor is mediating at least part of this activity of melatonin on BMEL. So BMEL, so melatonin can modulate the circadian clock. And why is that important in cancer? One, I've already told you that the period 2 gene, which you see right here as part of the clock, has the ability to act as a tumor suppressor gene by activating DNA repair mechanisms and inducing apoptosis. So if a cancer, if a normal breast epithelial cell gets cancer, or it's, it's mutagenized by chemical and you get DNA damage, DNA addict formation, 
These cells have mechanisms such as P53 and BRCA1 and 2 that act to repair the DNA damage. If they can't repair the DNA damage, they then shift the cell to an apoptotic pathway and the cell dies. That's how we protect ourselves from developing cancer. So period 2 plays a critical role in that. I've already showed you that. But there is some new data coming out on another protein called CERT1. CERT1 is a member of the silencing information regulatory protein family, CERTUINs, that we've people have studied a long time for aging. They're anti-aging proteins. And CERT1 is a class 3 histone deacetylase. And what it does, it can deacetylate some histones and it can deacetylate other proteins. But CERT1 has a variety of pro-cancer activities and some actually anti-cancer activities. The data is not completely clear. But CERT1 can interact with clock and b mill to increase their degradation, but it also increases the degradation of PER2. So CERT1, under, in response to molecular damage or metabolic stress, can regulate a variety of pathways, and it represses BRCA1 expression and activity, P53, uh, the retinoblastoma gene, and those activities. And in doing so, it represses DNA repair. It represses growth arrest or apoptosis and allow, allow cells in general to survive. So these cells that have been mutagenized, damaged with, with various carcinogens, now can become metastatic and malignant and can grow and proliferate. So here is some relatively new data from our laboratory showing that we took MCF7 cells, we measured the levels of CERT1 in our MCF7 cells. They express high levels of CERT1, and if we overexpress the melatonin receptor and treat them with melatonin, we can dramatically decrease CERT1 levels in our MCF7 cells. So I'm going to wrap up. This is my last slide, and I just want to walk you through this a little bit. These are the actions of melatonin. Remember that light at night is able to repress melatonin production. So what does melatonin do? Well, my studies have shown that melatonin through the MT1 receptor is able to blunt or block estrogen receptor alpha activity and all the pathways from ER, including cyclin D1, by the way, that lead to proliferation. That's one mechanism. Melatonin through the activation of the RAR alpha, RXR alpha pathways induces cells to differentiate and also suppresses, uh, suppresses their growth. By causing cells to differentiate, we can make them sensitive to apoptotic mechanisms. Melatonin can directly affect apoptotic pathways, pathways by increasing the uh, mitochondrial apoptotic protein backs, but melatonin can also repress ROI-alpha to regulate clock proteins, BMEL and clock, but melatonin can also come in here and block CERT1 levels and remove CERT's inhibitory effects on DNA repair enzymes such as PER2, P53, uh, also BRCA1 and 2 downstream, and metabolic genes. So melatonin in breast cancer can have an, uh, an inhibitory effect on breast cancer initiation, breast cancer promotion, and breast cancer progression, even to the point of impacting invasion and metastasis. And I want to stop here and uh, thank the people in my laboratory and all of my collaborators. The people in red are my students and postdocs that have done all the work. I just sit around and sort of throw ideas out for them. But these are my collaborators, and I want to thank them. So I'll take some questions. So we 